Hi, I'm David H. I manage my illness and diabetes with my EKG. The information I share is for informational purposes only and is not intended as health or medical advice. Please consult your physician regarding questions you may have about your health objectives. All right, I guess you see my glucose level is still not where I want it to be. It's still trending high. Hey, I am going to the doctor. I have my appointment next week. And probably when you see my next vlog, I probably would have started back on meds, assuming my doctor think I should. But <laughs> like I said, my glucose is much higher than uh, where I'd like for it to be. Hey, before I get going, don't forget to like, share, and ring the notification bell. That will really um, help a brother out. All right, my inspiration quote for today is, don't talk about what you're going to do, just do it and let your actions speak for you. That's kind of like where I am with my glucose right now. For the past several months, you know, I've been saying, if it doesn't go down, or I'll go back and get on meds. I have no problem getting no meds. I've been repeating that sad song for about three months. My actions are going to speak for me. I am going to the doctor this week, and if she thinks every, if she think I should, I have no problem getting back on meds. So probably the next time you see my next vlog, I will be back on meds, but just because I'm back on meds, that doesn't mean um, the EKG, eat healthy, know your numbers, and get off the couch, doesn't apply. It applies even more so, because my goal is to get back to where I was, getting back off of meds, or that just uh, the meds just become part of my routine. You have to eat healthy, you have to know your numbers, you know, going to the doctor like I'm doing, and you have to get off the couch, get some physical activity. You got it? Okay, the next step, actually, I filmed this out of order because the next step, I went on a bike ride. You know, I rode my bike this morning, so instead of recording my intro this morning, waking everyone up, uh, or if I had gone outside, it was dark out there, what have you, I decided to record my intro after I came back off my bike ride. So, on to the next step. Okay, this morning, my next stop, I'm going to get a ride in. Hey, I said I got to get back on my bike. It starts uh, today. It's been a while since I've really been on my bike and did some riding in. I'm not going to do my usual mileage. You know, I, on a Friday morning, I usually try to get 35 miles in. I'm just going to go for half. If I can get about 16 miles in, I'll call that success. All right, I'm going to bring you along with me. All right, here I go. Wow. It took me a minute to get going. Actually, after I filmed the intro, I put my rain gear on, not rain gear, my winter gear, my mitts, see my mitts, what have you, got the bike ready. Actually, it took me about 15, 20 minutes to get going. My GPS, my Garmin was having issues. Oh, yeah, I forgot how to use it. <laughs> and then my lights. Normally when I ride early morning like this, particularly during this time of year, I like to put my lights on. But their straps and stuff are on my other bike. I'll get back in the groove. To ride the trail here, this is about the only incline of note that I will encounter here and going over the bridge when I make this turn here. Outside of that, it's relatively flat. I said I was going to do 16. We'll see.
I normally don't stop on my rides unless I'm picking a water break or something. But I really wanted to show you this. This is why I call this one of my favorite rides. I think this is gorgeous. I wanted to get out early enough where the sun is just coming over the horizon over the uh, river here, the Schuylkill River. But this is pretty in itself. Okay, I got it done. I got roughly 17 and a half miles in. That's more than I thought. I thought I would get 16 in, but hey, I went a mile over. So hey, that's great. <laughs> All right then, on to the next stop. Okay, I'm getting ready to fix something to eat. Uh, today, what I'm going to fix is broccoli cheese soup. Actually, if this is your first time to my channel or if you haven't heard me say it in a while, I really, really, really hate cooking, but I do it as part of my uh, managing my um, diabetes. And I know some of you have asked, um, how can cooking help manage your diabetes? Actually, with this um, cheddar broccoli soup, what is it? Yeah, yeah, broccoli cheese soup <laughs> is a perfect example of why um, I cook you know, occasionally to help manage my diabetes. Because basically it's just an educational thing. Broccoli cheese soup, just from the sound of it, uh, you would think that's low carb. And since for a diabetic person, a low carb diet is a preferred diet. But in all honesty, if you're going out, you buying cheddar cheese soup from Panera Bread, or Outback, or wherever you partake, nine times out of ten, that cheddar cheese soup is not low carb. Actually, the one at Panera Bread has like 26 carbs in it. I never would have known that if I never would have attempted to make this um this low carb cheddar cheese soup. And the one I'm making is low carb, it only, it only has two grams of carbs. And the reason being because you're making it creamy uh, with uh, more cheese. And also, um, there's some other techniques you can do. It's kind of like um, using the immerse, what you call it, blender or something. And I'm not going to use an immersion, an immersion blender, but I am going to um, blend it up to make it um, thick per se. Or you can use some type of gum, extan, extan, I don't know how to pronounce it, type gum. That's low carb, that's zero carb to thicken it up. But what a lot of restaurants do, they'll put in flour, you know, uh, what have you, corn starch. They'll add sugar, you know, um, to all that to get it up to where they want it. Hence, it's not low carb. And since I use Panera bread as an example, that's not even with that bread bowl that they have. So now if you get the, um, this cheddar cheese soup in that bread bowl, it's much more than 26 carbs. So cooking, that's why I say I cook occasionally, basically for educational so I can learn uh, what's good for me, what's bad for me. And also um, when you're going out or you're eating somewhere else, you have an idea uh, as what's in your meal there. That makes sense? All right, well, I'm gonna give this a go. Like I said, this only has two gram of carbs and I got the recipe from Wholesome Yum. I've used a couple of her recipes um, before and I typically like everything. Um, every recipe I try from them, I typically like it. All right, here I go. Okay, I finished. Actually, it looks pretty good. I think it's gonna taste pretty good too. Hey, like I said last week, when you're trying to tape and cook and all that, it just take a long time. According to the recipe, this is supposed to have only taken 20 minutes. It actually took about 45 minutes to an hour. All right, let me give it a shot. And I have the wifey off camera to give it a shot. I forgot I was gonna make some uh, toast to go with this. I forgot to do that. It tastes like broccoli and cheese to me. But like I said, I'm not the soup person. The wife is the soup person, so let's see what she said. 
Let me give it a shot. Yep. Oh, it's kind of hot. The bowl is hot. It's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. It's good. Okay. Now she said it was good. She didn't say it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, like I say, it tastes like uh, broccoli and cheese. Only two carbs. All right. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe.